A warm welcome from me too. My name is Alexandra Becker, and I'm a research assistant at the Media University in Stuttgart, Germany. I managed there since 2017 under the responsibility of Professor Dr. Richard Stang, the Project Learning World University, which deals with university development. In addition, since 2012, I have been investigating the usage behavior of students in a self-study center at the university in a real laboratory. Today, I will present to you the results of the research project Learning World University, along with the framework conditions, together with the challenges found and examples of good practice. Since one cannot be thought without the other, I will briefly introduce the other dimensions, which can be divided into the dimensions of the university policy, university organization, further development of teaching, and physical and digital st structures. Then I will go into the area of the teaching and learning rooms in more detail and present good practice. Challenges faced by universities are diverse and affect several areas that are unfortunately still parallel and separate. Due to the Bologna reform, the focus of teaching was placed on competence orientation. As a result of the turn to constructivism, the shift from teaching to learning emerged, which emphasizes the learning processes and completely changes the entire teaching. In addition, there's digitization, which not only has a major impact on the university teaching, and at the same time, processes of social change are taking place, which also call on universities to make changes. These processes are still being processed and viewed separately from one another, so that not only parallel structures do arise and a lot of capacities are lost, but unnecessarily moodle obstacles also arise. A supportive way of interweaving these processes and to achieve the individual goals of the pro process, like successful graduates, effective and efficient organization by using digital possibilities, is the perspective of um, student orientation. In this way, the student turns from the product of the university to the user of the university itself. Okay. Let's take a look at the framework conditions for universities in Germany. First, there's a federal structure. And since in Germany, the sovereignty of education lies with the federal states and not with the federal government, it is important to consider the federal states individually. The differences are considerable in the detail so that comparability and special features must be taken into account. And there is Article 5, Paragraph 3 in the Basic Law, which writes down that teaching and research are free. So nobody is allowed to determine what, how is taught. The universities are allowed to frame, but the details are left to the lecturer. This means that teaching is not easy to describe from the outside or to observe in terms of research. The new public management program is also being implemented in Germany. It aims to make the university organization more effective, efficient, participatory, and transparent. This is only reflected to a limited extent in the state university laws, but it has a great influence within the control of universities by the ministries. And of course, the Bologna reform, through the reform of the study structure and the introduction of the competence levels, also has a major impact. From a researcher's perspective, this means that an extremely large number of documents had to be analyzed in order to classify the results. For universities, this means that a very large number of different requirements and changes have to be dealt with. This leads to a great search movement because every university has an individual situation and at the same time has a lot in common with others. Let me first briefly outline the two projects in terms of form. From 2017 to 2020, we carried out the Learning World University project in cooperation with the University of Applied Science in Hamburg, the Otto Friedrich University in Bamberg, the Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf, and the DINI. This will be followed by the Learning World University 2030 project until 2022. 
Both projects are financed by the Dieter Schwarz Foundation. The aim of these projects is to determine the current status of the learning world universities in Germany with regard to student orientation and to identify challenges and good practices in the process. For this purpose, an extensive document analysis of laws, reports, room files, organizational charts, models, development and structural plans, and target and performance agreements between ministries and universities were carried out. At the beginning, all universities in Germany were invited to an online survey within universities could identify themselves, but did not have to. Guided interviews were conducted with 44 actors like university management, IT, library or infrastructure managers, as well as those responsible for university didactics. There were also five interviews with inter international, uh, international experts and five case studies with students. In the ongoing project, we conducted four workshops with decision makers and designers like university management, representatives of ministries and members of association and organizations. The research design is based on a consecutive structure of the samples. With the online survey, we want to gain awareness from, of the universities. We formed the sample for the interviews from that, the, that, that the universities had identified themselves and that had the best results in terms of student orientation. Then we interviewed 44 actors in order to receive qualitative information about the different actor pers perspectives. From these interviews, we received information about special procedures, projects, and ideas. With five of these particular interesting cases, we then carried out case studies again, which included an interview with the vice president for teaching, the campus inspection and focus group with students. Because we wanted to get the students' perception and take a deeper look at the teaching. In parallel, the document analysis was carried out over the entire project period. And all these results were then reflected in interviews with international experts. In the follow-up project, the results were discussed with the ministries, university management, and experts from Germany, and challenges, ideas, and solutions were collected. As you can imagine, I have an extremely large amount of data and results, so I apologize for not being able to explain them in depth. For almost all universities, it can be said, there are extremely many actors, groups of actors, and constellation of actors from which a multitude of confusing and complex interdependencies arise. The reform processes are only minimally interwoven. They affect and influence, encourage and inhibit one another. For example, the introduction of quality management from new public management promotes the development of teaching, but at the same time, the assessment basis of the global budget, normally some mix per student, or the financing and the target and performance agreements on the number of publications or third-party funds acquired. The amount available for teaching is neglected. This complicates the implementation of the shift from teaching to learning and the competence orientation, since no funds are provided for this. This makes it clear that there are hardly any strategies for the entire university. Strategies are only available for the sub-areas. Likewise, the processes, structures and procedures are hardly linked to one another, and the communication between the actors is in the need of improvement. Since we cannot look at any of these areas in detail, I would like to first present the results of the other areas before I turn to the physical teaching and learning rooms and show some good practice examples. The highest group of actors with regard to the education system in Germany is education policy, although I would like to leave out the European level at the moment. Since in Germany the sovereignty for education lies with the federal states, there's a high level of complexity and, if you want to address all federal states, only superordinate statements can be made. Due to the complexity just mentioned, it would be advantageous for everyone if this were reduced. It is important to balance out 
where the optimum can be found between the diversity, which is fundamentally positive, and standards. Here, there's a need for harmonization at the legal level. In Germany, the financing of university works through target and performance agreements, so that this can be used as an adjusting screw to calculate funds for improving teaching and also teaching and learning rooms, not only via the university building authorities. Since the quality of teaching cannot be measured in key figures, qualitative criteria have to be developed so they can be incorporated into the control by the ministries. It is also important to create incentive structures for teachers not only to continue their education digitally. This could be included as criteria in salary negotiations or in new staff and appointments. Basically, it is of course also important to include the shift from teaching to learning in the financing and to create budgets for it. So that this does not have to be paid additionally from the global or basic budget of the universities or to be financed by the means of research. To support this, higher education policy could create targeted innovation corridors through which the testing and consolidation of innovation in the field of learning and teaching rooms could be made possible. At the same time, and this is not only due to the speed of technological development, the decision-making processes in education policy must be accelerated, and this also includes reducing bureaucratic structures. And above all, associations and institutions, such as the University Rectors Conference, can demand changes that can be specified at the level of state ministries and budgets. Unfortunately, from the perspective of student orientation, universities are still thought in terms of departments or areas so that potentials and opportunities are not realized because nobody is responsible for them or resources are spent twice to realize things that are already available elsewhere. Bringing these processes, ideas and opportunities together it is important if you want to develop a coherent university. To this end, it is necessary to develop internal models of cooperation and to ensure and promote the participation of all actors. The actors should also detach themselves from their area to a certain extent and adopt a holistic perspective. Also, the imbalance in the evolution of research results and teaching quality must be eliminated within the university. One step is to develop a mission statement. No, not just the teaching model, because if you want to change the self-image of the university, it is important to have an overall model that integrates all tasks like research, teaching, submission, and other individual uh, tasks that were taken from the university. This already makes it clear that universities are multidimensional and that the contradicting tasks and goals have to be negotiated. In addition, it is not only internal cooperation that needs to be strengthened, but also cooperation with external organizations, partners, and institutions. Here I just want to indicate to public-private partnerships. Another example is the access components our concepts for students are mostly based on several keys like university ID, matriculation number, abbreviation, and so on. These naturally grown structures could be merged and the accessibility of rooms can also be simplified by a role concept so that empty rooms can be used for self-study. This topic also includes the guidance systems and the orientation options for students, guests, and external partners. And the all over challenges, all of this must be future proof, means to be controlled as regularly as possible. In the field of university didactics, it is important to design the new didactic approaches, including enabling collaborative work, supporting the real changes of the teacher, and developing new teaching and learning scenarios. For this purpose, Framework conditions must be created that makes it possible to integrate digital and mobile media, encourage students to stop consumption 
and start the creation of knowledge and skills through communication between students, researchers, and teachers. All of this demands a new openness from students and teachers, and that had to be learned first. In the past, the didactic centers have shown themselves to be a valuable support structure. This makes them a key facility that benefits both teachers and students, as well as interdisciplinary and organizational benefits. I had already mentioned the importance of a mission statement. Here it is important that all stakeholders agree and that awareness of the teaching is increased. This makes it clear that it is important to intensify further training activities to create the right framework for good teaching and to develop a model for teaching in order to include all stakeholders and to be able to use this for external presentation of the university. Although it is difficult to think of physical and digital structures separately in the course of hybridization, I would like to take a look at the results of the digital structures at this point before we turn to the teaching and learning rooms. One of the main challenges is that Germany is unfortunately not very far advanced in terms of digitization. And that also means that is not yet optimally implemented in the higher education. No, nobody has to master everything alone. Many structures can be used jointly with others. Therefore, cooperation within as well as with other universities should be sought. It is also a task to increase the incentives for the development of digitally enriched teaching in order to motivate teachers and IT developers not only to conceptualize these formats, but also to implement and test them. Of course, this also requires new professional profiles that have to be developed and integrated in the university. It is also important to provide a modern infrastructure that hy supports hybrid teaching and learning. This includes not only stable Wi-Fi, but also physical rooms that encourage working with augmented and virtual reality. In the area of digitization, due to the rapid technological development and the variety of possibilities, it is advisable to not only control top-down, but also enable many bottom-up projects and processes. From the perspective of student orientation, it makes sense to combine learning management and campus management systems on one platform and get through this better control of the penetration of all levels. In terms of the holistic view of the university, it is also advantageous if the strategies control the portfolio of the university and, of course, the available budget are brought together and to bring it into line with the other models. It is also important that the new IT concept is consistent between the structural levels of the university. From the point of view of the further development of teaching, e-learning should be brought into focus, spread the testing and use new teaching and learning concepts across the university, set incentives and promote exchange and engagement with digital media and innovative formats. For university, this means not only to be open to new things and perhaps strange things, but also to provide the infrastructure and keep an eye on care, maintenance and modernization. A modular building block-like development is ideal here, which can be quickly adapted, expanded or rebuilt. The last of the dimensions considered here is that of the teaching and learning rooms. In this area too, it is important that a strategy for developing the teaching and learning rooms is evolved. Germany expects an increase in students in the coming years. So this should be taken into account in the strategy. The changed didactic concept should also be taken into account so that it can be carried out in the rooms together with the digitization. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown that the digital teaching is also located in the physical space and that this cannot be replaced digitally as a social interaction space so that informal communication Changing counters and exchanges must also be taken into account. This shows a need to learn on the part of the students, which, in addition to the challenges of self-organization, 
was one of the most discussed points in conversations with students. It also includes consciously shaping the quality of stay. What kind of tasks should be performed in the room? Should informal communication be supported? What technical and analog support must be provided? This consideration alone makes it clear that a large number of settings should be made possible in order to support cooperation, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. In terms of research-based learning, it would make sense if not only students and teachers, but also researchers and external partners come together and work together in these rooms. The increasing number of making spaces, workshops and labs are also a good idea to enable project work and problem-based or challenge-based learning in collaboration with others. But also for this, both personal and material resources must be available. It makes sense to zone the room not only in order to be future-proof and adaptable, so it is conceivable to support the area for single learners and individual work, for example, by switching off the VLAN in order to make concentrated work easier. Equipping with analog and digital equipment and a wide variety of furniture also makes sense in the order to carry out the respective task. For example, clean back when there is reception, or lean forward when interaction is to be enabled, and the social form, for example, via individual tables that can be easily grouped to support different sizes of groups. Another option is to facilitate access to the room. Since students often commute and use off-peak times, it can make sense to open rooms such as self-study areas on the library 24-7. It is also helpful to offer guidance systems and room booking systems for the individual areas. At this point, I would also like to point out the food and drinks in the room. We are not long alive in a traditional division of breakfast, lunch and dinner. We all carry water bottles with us. It is certainly understandable to protect expensive collections in the library from coffee stains or greasy fingerprints. But consumption should be allowed wherever possible because the boundaries between the types of use are blurring. Especially in the area of physical spaces, it is important to expand hybrid use, to create offers such as augmented and virtual reality, to offer movable multi-user monitors, to adopt the internet capacity to the simultaneous use of laptop, tablet, and mobile phone, which corresponds to three internet users per student at the same time. Of course, the same also applies the other way around. In the virtual space, it would be good to, to create references to the physical space. For this, concepts and informations must be made available to the designers of the digital office. Wherever interfaces between the digital and physical space are possible, they should be used. Whether in the room booking system, in which not only the entire room, but also a certain space or a number of spaces can be reserved, or via interactive monitors, which refer to the virtual possibilities in the room. Okay, not every room can do everything. It doesn't even have to. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the interaction concepts, teaching and learning methods, digital office should be thought on the basis of the space where it is possible uses. For teaching, this means a coordination process between what the teacher wants to and what the, t uh, the space allows. You already know, doing group work with digital support in an Audimax can be a challenge, but it doesn't have to, as I will show in an example. Okay, if we break down the requirements for the teaching and learning rooms, the following can be summarized. Spaces and digital structures should enable and facilitate this for all groups of actors, like students, employees, researchers, professors, and project partners. Um, let them autonomous, and uh, even though work in small groups, within a department as well as interdisciplinary, analog as well as digital supported, 
including virtual and augmented reality, and enable communication across disciplines and roles. Due to the variety and the contradicting requirements of flexible and holistic design office itself. The following examples show institutions that deal with the design of space that bring together different actors, forms of work and technologies. Unfortunately, I have to apologize because under covered, it is almost impossible to get pictures and um, information about the project and the examples. So I'm not able to show you a lot of pictures, but I can show you a few. The Technical University Eindhoven got the challenge-based learning as their didactic model. And so there is a competence center for challenge-based learning and student entrepreneurship. A learning center for educational innovation and open community in which students, researchers, industry, and social organizations can exchange knowledge and develop responsibility or responsible solutions to real world challenges. By working together on these challenges in multidisciplinary teams and in collaboration with industry and societal partners, students are intrinsically motivated and progress through step and learning curves. In teams, they learn how to solve complex challenges, deepen their knowledge and acquire new knowledge and professional skills. The innovation space offers facilities to create science-based solution. It has a maker space their students can design and create innovative prototype types with technical support and surveillance. Results can be demonstrated in an exhibition space, and that is an ample room to meet both formally and informally. Beyond the physical space, the innovation space provides a platform that interconnects motivated students, staff, and industry. Um, the Skylab at the Denmark's Technische Universität Lingby combines cutting edge technology and science with an ambitious and open community where students, researchers, and business partners meet to share knowledge and develop visionary solutions to real challenges. It is a living lip for innovation and entrepreneurship, housed on 5,500 square meters, completed with labs, workshops, auditorium, open space, and project rooms. It enables cross-disciplinary learning environment used by various institutes of the university and also offers soft funding, business acceleration, prototyping, and a space to grow for deep tech startups and pre-startup projects. As you can see in the picture, the furniture is designed for flexibility and for example, the hexagonal tables uh, can be easily combined to form a larger unit. The project rooms are equipped for both lean forward and uh, even though lean back, like you can see here. And the building is not only equipped with plants and through this it is contributes a feel good atmosphere, but also offers work and meeting facilities. All in all, stimulating, functional, but also calm elements were mixed, which not only communicates the diversity intuitively, but also promotes it. Hybrid education gives the opportunity for students and lecturers who cannot come to the campus for any reason to come together synchronously. Good preparation of hybrid education is essential, like in particular, the supporting role of a moderator for who, for example, monitors the online attendance and helps with some light technical support. The Technical University in Delft got an ad lab and teaching lab to train the teacher of the future. As well as these education rooms, simple hybrid light sets are available, so-called meetups. With these sets, the lecture is visible and audible for all students, but interaction is limited. Um, the availability of the meeting upsets is organized by the faculties themselves. Of course, this could also be interesting in a collaboration with other universities, businesses, or guest lectures from abroad. There are also rooms that are set up like a theater. They are used as an open space with stands for all types of use. 
for example, kickoff, guest speakers, workshops, and so on, but also some serve a various form of teaching and learning. Um, the picture at the bottom right shows a little speciality. There are not only single places with a folding table, but also two seater benches um, with also equipped with a folding table. Uh, another example, in a two-week idea competition under the direction of Professor Jens Peter, interior design students developed innovative concepts for redesigning the so-called Indoprint room at the HFT Stuttgart. The task was to incorporate various usual scenarios into the, the design. The Indoprint room, on the one hand, new workplaces are to be created for students and researchers, and on the other hand, the students should consider using it as a workshop presentation or event area. The redesign of the Indoprint room is part of the development of a creative room network that includes new types of rooms with various possible uses. In addition, the classic teaching and work rooms at the HFT Stuttgart, the creative room focused on modularity in design, flexibility in use, and promotes internal and external transfer. As you can see, different levels in the room, like here, um, and a var variety of furnishing are used here as well. There is soundproofing and privacy protection, and um, rather harder and softer seating, chairs, armchairs, or stools, and similar to the previous theater solution, the steps are working with different heights. As you can see here, that one is for walking and that one is for sitting, so it creates a new zone in. Harlan University, exactly, the School of Education Science um, got the Edospace Research Laboratory. It is aimed primarily to researchers, lecturers, students, but also at the same time for companies and teachers, offering modern opportunities for research and development in the field of education, as well as, for example, product development projects for enterprises of educational technology. The laboratory is equipped with modern research and educational technology equipment. In collaboration with university researchers, the Edospace research, the research Laboratory aims to provide partnerships with educational technology companies to jointly develop effective science and evidence-based educational innovation materials and products. Teachers and educational technologists are also welcome to the laboratory to create and test new teaching materials and methods. Here, too, they work with um, diversity in the working heights, you can see here she's standing, they're playing on the ground. Here's something like a theater solution. And um, yeah, uh, what's interesting about this example is that the coloring of the carpet supports the zoning of the different areas, as you can see here, the plane with the child and so on. Another example, the NTU Norway has rebuilt a lecture hall so that is, was expanded with movable tables for group work. The learning arena is multifunctional and works with digital support at the group workstations for four to five people. The Smithy, together with the associated sandpit room, will investigate how classrooms can be designed for more varied license in which more alternation between dismission and group work takes place. To get new technologies in the form of, for example, interactive screens and screen sharing um, were very important too. The project has set up a three-part research group that focused on each subject area, architecture and furnishing, technology and pedagogy. The idea was to try out different solutions for the two rooms in order to evaluate and experience them later when the new classrooms are to be planned in the campus development of the NTU. Also at the NTU is the R2. It is a large auditorium that extends over two levels. The aim of this pilot project is to test students' learning outcomes while rebuilding a traditional Audimax. After the renovation, R2 has still a cathedral pro projector and whiteboard that we all know from traditional classroom lessons. However, the desk covers were replaced by five levels on which 28 group stations were distributed. Yeah. 
Each station has a common screen that can be connected to any device students have brought in. A loudspeaker and a microphone are also installed in the group tables. The group can also have writing surface between the screens and the subject teacher can use the casita to control the, which content is shared on the screen. In this way, attempts have been made to allow for um, increased study activity, collaboration and the ability to vary between different learning activities. The R2 has a capacity around about for 160 students. With the garage, Northwestern Usability, uh, University has a space that combines a cafe, several flexible conference rooms, flexible work and maker spaces, and RR and VR labs. But let us have a look at the video. A is located in the heart of the garage and it is easily accessible to all visitors and members. It is possible to have a cup of coffee, brainstorm a new idea with a friend, or work on homework and soak in some of the garage entrepreneurial energy. The conference room comfortably seats 10 people. The room is equipped with different screens for sharing presentations or video conferences. All of the walls and the table are dry erase for brainstorming and work sessions. As you have seen, there's a large variety of furnishings and office settings, from individual work in booths that are reminiscent of a telephone booth to areas that are equipped as lounges. There are also video game machines that invite you to take a break. It is also interesting that the meeting rooms are equipped differently, lean back versus lean forward, soft or hard seating, or even with bean bags. The Yale Center for Engineering and Innovation and Design is divided into two floors. On the first floor, they have the studio, metal and woodworking um, workshops and the lecture hall. The lecture hall is a full equipped configurable classroom that seats up to 40 people with multiple projects and surfaces, ample white spot space, and a variety of presentation equipment. The lecture hall is used for courses and can also be reserved by student groups for events, info sessions, and workshops. The studio features rapid prototype and equipment, cutting and a sewing area, hand and power tools, electronic workstation, 3D printers, a vinyl cutter, sheet metal equipment, and much more. There's also a wide variety of prototyping materials, electrical components, and together with the workshops, 
they are accessible 24 seven for members of the university. And on the second floor, they got the meeting rooms, a wet lab and the offices of the director and the assistant director. Each of the five meeting rooms seat up to 12 people. Multiple rooms can be combined by a collapsible watch, which separates the room. These rooms can be reserved by courses and are available for first come, first served basis for studying, gaming, or just hanging out. Additionally, they offer a wide range of tools and training materials. Finally, I would like to show you two somewhat different offers. The Fat Lab New York City is not a university, and the future space of the University of Western England invites people from outside to work and collaborate with the university, but they have to pay a fee for using the space. Not a part of a university, but with offers for students and with educational support, the Fat Cat Fat Lab New York City offers the connection to a network engineering uh, manufacturers and medical specialists who use in doing it yourself manufacturing technology. Part of the network are, for example, the Columbia University, Wild Cornell Medicine, New York City Restrictor, Hack Manhattan, the whole Fat Cat Fat Lab Network, the Makerspace New York City, and lots of others. It offers rooms for digital production, wood and metal processing, and for the electronic sector, as well as options for textile processing and other materials. Here it is of interest that, on the one hand, networking for and with universities not only offers opportunities that the university itself may not be able to present, and on the other hand, that many contacts can, can be made that could not be reached by inviting speakers or lecturers. Uh, can you imagine what happened or what um, conversation will happen when you um, bring a textile student and uh, a medical man together? I think that could be very interesting. So the future space, uh, I told you, if you're uh, willing to pay the fee, it offers you 24 hours access to your own private office uh, from one up to 20 people. All inclusive package, including access to business support, conferencing and University of Western England resources. But let us have a look at the video. This includes the possibility of exchanging and cooperating with researchers, students, and other business people. The university get paid for this expertise and receivers, through this additional income, the possibility to continue investing in the university. Founding companies, startups, or developed companies benefit from the know-how of the university and the cooperation with researchers, the workforce, and other students give students new insights and new collaboration for research and teaching pro projects. This creates a win-win situation for everyone involved. Let me summarize again at the end. There are challenges at all levels and the interaction and the holistic view of the learning world of the university is important for every university. Teaching and learning rooms can make a major contribution to achieve the goals and should also be viewed from a holistic perspective. As we have seen, the examples bring the groups of actors together 
They are interdisciplinary and various and usually flexible, not only in their equipment or their furnitures. They support communication on an equal footing, for example, across hierarchies and real concepts. They encourage creativity and allow you to try things out and with it, the failure of ideas. At this point, I would like to warmly recommend the books that have been published so far from the project to get more detailed view on the results. And I want to say finally, thank you for your attention.